A small Roman fortlet was discovered in Keneally State. Within the fortlet, timber posts also marked the positions of original Roman posts, which were found during the 1981 excavation. Some of these finds you can see in Keneally Museum. The fortlet was attached to the Antonine Wall and was constructed in 142 AD under orders of the Emperor Antonius Pius. For a generation, it was the northwestern frontier of the Roman Empire. The wall ran from 60 kilometres from Old Kilpatrick to the north side of the River Clyde to here in Bowness on the River Forth. The fallout was rectangular in shape and enclosed by a turf and wood rampart inside a protective ditch. A gravel road ran from, from south to north in through the fort lot with gateways at either end. The Antonine Wall was built with soil and turf and is also 12 feet high. Around 20,000 soldiers would have manned the wall at one time. It's so cold here at Keneal. I wish I was back in Rome drinking some vino and good da bad da. Who is cooking me dinner tonight? Maximus! Oh, fantastico! More spaghetti, garlic and mushrooms! Bella, bella! Stop thinking of your stomach! We're supposed to be looking out for the barbarians! Do you think they want to fight today? I don't know! They drank a lot in the village last night! Look, look! There they are! Where, Where are they? Are they? Oh, This morning. Well, you shouldn't have drunk so much last night. But it was good. Man, huh, you can't hurt your drink, no like us women. <laughs> 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 well, I drank just as much as you lot last night. Not you lot! Are we going to attack this fortlet this morning or wait till the afternoon while we have a wee sleep? Let's do the noon and stay the afternoon. We're warriors, you can! Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We're warriors again. Look, they're no bad, really. One of those become friendly with Rachel. Hey, Maximus, what are you doing today? Hey, Maximus, if nice, he gave me garlic to plant and gave me something to put in my shoe. They know it's alright, you can. Aye, she's right. That Maximus has his own allotment. He showed me how to grow wheat to make her own bread. Aye, I can, but they're still the enemy, so we're going to attack her now. Come on, then, get ready to charge them! <laughs> Robert the Bruce was born on the 11th of July, year 1274, and died on the 7th of June, 1329. He was buried at Nymphermond Abbey. Bruce led the Scots during the Wars of Independence against the Kingdom of England. At the Battle of Keneal Muir, the great general of England, England's first general, was killed by Robert the Bruce's royal bodyguard, Gilbert Hamilton. It is said that Gilbert had been with the king fighting on the field at Wantburn. It is Bruce... When Spruce died, he was buried at Nymphermond Abbey. Gilbert gave a speech about his king and friend.
it is recorded that in 1323, Walter Hamilton, the son of Sir Gilbert Hamilton, is set, had been gifted Canela Estate by Robert the Bruce. Although the Hamilton family lived at Hamilton House, their house at Canela became very important as it was convenient to stay there on their way back to Edinburgh and the Royal Court. Gilbert of Hamilton, kneel before your king. Gilbert of, Ham Gilbert of Hamilton, today you have done a great justice for your king and country. Arise, Sir Gilbert of Hamilton. Your Majesty, I thank you. I, your loyal servant, will serve you until the last day of my life. Sir James the first of Hamilton built the twin towers on each side of the tower house to celebrate his second marriage to Princess Mary of Scotland. They had a son James, second Lord of Hamilton. James was also known as the Earl, the Earl of Arran from 1503. James was known to be the best archer in Scotland. He, he was well known for his great horses which he kept at Kneel and even King James the fourteenth seed these horses. James II, Earl of Adam, was said to be the first builder of the Palace of Hamilton. Lots of things over the years happened to the Hamilton family. King came to visit Keneal. On the 9th of March 1649, the Duke was beheaded and his body brought, brought back to Keneal, but he was buried at Hamilton. The Duke was killed because he, because he tried to rescue the King from Oliver Cromwell, but he got caught. He had two daughters, Anna and Susanna. Anne became Duchess of Hamilton because her uncle and cousin were, were killed after her father, so there are no men left to receive the title. Duchess Anne was born in 1636 and 13 year old when her father was killed, and 15, year, 15 years of age when she became a Duchess. In 1668, the king granted her wish, the first type of fair starting in Morris in the 1670s. Again, Duchess Anne asked the Scottish Parliament to have four fairs each year instead of just one. She decided to change the 18th of November fair to the second Tuesday of July because it was too cold in November. The Duke and Duchess of Hamilton had fair had 13 children. Their oldest son, James, married Lady Anne Spencer. She, he loved it. They lived at Kneel, but poor Anne died at the age of 24. She's an ancestor to Prince William's son, Princess Diana. James shut up Kneel House after Anne had died and went back down to London and married again but never came back to live at Kneel. The Hamiltons only stayed at Kneel when they were on their way from the Hamilton Palace to the Parliament in Edinburgh. Good day. My name is Sergeant Lefkoe and I'd like to be presented to the Duke and Duchess. I will see if they are at home and I will see them guests today. This is Sir John Lefkoe wishing to meet with you, ma'am. See you here, Margaret. I love it. Please tell the Duke to join us. Yes, ma'am. My name is Duchess Anne Hamilton. Welcome to my home, Camille House. Good day, my name is the Duke of Hamilton and this is my son James. I'm here to discuss a proposal of kind in regard to me next week on our borough. I wish to inform the good people on this will object to this. That's tough, my mother wants it to happen. James, marriage please! Sorry ma'am. Well who do people from Lithgow think they are? James! James, enough! Do you want to go to your room? Well, finally, all was it down on us. My apologies for my son, Sir Lefkoe. I will consider not Lefkoe objection. Thank you, ma'am. Elizabeth, oh. please so Sir John to the door. Okay, but that's how I feel.
1649, Oliver Cromwell became the ruler of Scotland and took over all the lands from King Charles's foes, including Duchess Anne, one of Cromwell's generals, General Lilburn, was to take over the Queen of House. The Lilburns had just got married and were commanded to move up to Scotland. Their marriage was not a happy one. The general and Lady Alice were always arguing. To teach her a lesson, the general locked her in a small room looking over the Gilburn. Unknown to him, Lady Alice became friendly with one of the other soldiers. My love, do not be so unhappy. I shall take you away from here and we'll turn to England to your family. Oh, I will be so happy. When can we leave? As soon as possible, my love. Unknown to them, a soldier had overheard their conversation and reported this to the general. The soldier was to be entombed in the hollow of a tree. Guards! Yes, sir. Take him and get rid of him. Okay. Get off. Yes, sir, we will guard her and make sure she's comfortable. You will not keep me here. I will escape. Oh, no, I won't, my lady. We'll be here night and day. Well, we will. What about her ale? Well, let me out, I said. Let me out. Will she not shut up? She's doing my head in. Aye, ah, this will drive any man to drink. One night, Lady Ass climbed out of the window in her white nightdress and fell to her death in the Gilburn. Can you see her? Aye, I sure did there. She's dead. John Roebuck was born in Sheffield. His father had a manufacturing business and when John became older, he studied medicine at Edinburgh University. John became involved in many kinds of work and founded the manufacturing of iron with two friends. They established the Falkirk Carn Iron Works in 1760. John and his wife lived in Canal House and leased it from his friend the Duke of Hamilton. John also leased the mine from the Duke to supply coal to the Carn Iron Works. He was having problems in the mine as the new common steam engines were not powerful enough to pump the water so the mine kept flooding. James worked away with the invention and trying to stop the flooding. Dr. Roback became a great believer in the invention and bought two floods share and helped Watt in perfecting all the details. Good. Soon Dr. Roback had financial difficulties and found himself bankrupt. He then had to sell everything. He owed £1,200 to a man called Matthew Bolton. Oh. Uh, Mr. Bolton was interested in... James Watt had his secret plans for the invention, so he asked for the share mon shares of the money instead of cancelling Dr. Roebuck's debt. James went down to Birmingham to work for Mr. Bolton to continue to develop his steam engine of Watt horsepower in the condenser. He did soon after and became a partner of Mr. Bolton in a company called Bolton and Watt. Dr. Roebuck died in 1794, a poor man, and he is buried in Carradon Church graveyard. His friends paid for his headstone as he was a great friend to them and they thought he deserved a nice headstone. James was an engineer, but he was to come, become one of the world's greatest engineers of all time. Dr. John persuaded young James to come and live with him and his wife at Canoe to help to stop the flooding in the mine. James was working on a secret invention. Dr John told him he, that, that he could use the little cottage behind Canal House as his workshop and he would be hidden away so he could work on his plans. Yes sir, and may I help you? Yes, my name is James Watt. I have come to see Dr John Roebuck. 
The master is expecting you. Please follow me this way, sir. Sir? This is Mr. James Watt. Ah, good day to you, young man. Good to meet you, sir. I hope you have come to solve all my problems. Oh, I hope so, sir. I do hope so. P5 have had a great time making the film, so I hope you have enjoyed it. We would like to thank the Friends of Keneal and Sanctus Media for all their help.